By the time you see this, the Four Lantern Red event will be underway, coinciding with the version 4.4 update, and wow, it has been a journey. Genshin Impact has been part of four Chinese New Years, which is something to think about, and though there has been a fair bit of controversy and tension surrounding this recent one in light of recent public relations drama, I want to put that aside for today and instead go over the new 5-star character being released alongside this patch. And in typical version 4 fashion, she likes to take a more unconventional approach to things compared to version 3, 2, and 1 units, though fortunately that does not detract from her viability. However, it's definitely something that demands a closer reinspection later into the year. Joining our two wards, Ganyu and Shunhu, after realizing she needs to touch grass, is Shenyun, an animal 5-star, making her the first one since Wanderer and the second animal character to be released in version 4 behind Lynette. The developers emphasized that they wanted Shenyun to touch on a less explored facet of Genshin's combat in an effort to give players more ways to go about completing the game's content, much like how they've been doing with Linny's Mono Pyro and Nebula's Hypercarry playstyle. I'm excited to talk about Shenyun because I've been waiting for Hoyo to finally remember plunging attacks are a thing. So without further ado, today we'll be analyzing Cloud Retainer's abilities and gameplay to see how she ranks among the current roster, as well as talk about whether or not she might need some future help to fully realize her potential. Shen Yun's a very peculiar character in gameplay. Obviously in terms of appearance, I think we can all agree she's 10 out of 10 waifu material, but it might be tricky to ascertain how good she really is considering, well, her kit revolves around a mechanic that we haven't seen explicitly covered for years, plunging attacks. This immediately poses a question. Are plunging attacks even viable in the first place? Plunging attacks have thus far been regarded as a second-rate way of dealing damage for the overwhelming majority of characters, aside from a certain jump happy shorty, of course. The inherent problem with this form of combat is that it's simply not possible to achieve plunging attacks under normal circumstances. For you to execute one, you have to be sufficiently high enough above the ground, which you can't do simply by jumping. There have been ways to game the system by essentially jumping on top of enemies and using their collision detection to get just a bit more verticality on their jumps, to which they can then use a plunging attack, but as far as I'm aware, that's only applicable to certain enemies, making it unreliable. Taking into account that every boss arena, domain, and dungeon consists of a large, empty, and flat room with no semblance of terrain, any instance of plunging attacks is purely accidental. This effectively rendered plunging attacks an overworld exclusive, where you can make use of nearby terrain to get a surprise attack or deal heavy damage to material shields. Anywhere else, only a select group of characters could practically turn plunging attacks into a consistent form of pressure, including but not limited to Shao and Kasuha. We know from Shao that with enough damage and support, plunging attacks can be extremely effective due in part to their comparatively wider attack range than standard normal or charge attacks. Additionally, plunging attacks deal significantly more damage than charge attacks without consuming stamina. The caveat is that on top of needing to be at a greater height than a standard jump can achieve, plunging attacks deal damage based on how high off the ground you were before initiating the attack. To keep things simple, there are two attacks that stem from plunging. The first is the quote-unquote drill attack. It's not actually a drill attack, but it's most evident on polearm users who spin around like a drill on their way down. While in this state, they deal 3 hits per second, so if you can somehow perpetually stay on the downward fall animation, then you can literally become a drill on whoever you're fighting. The second, and the one that you should care about, is the actual impact, separated into two categories, low plunge and high plunge. When striking from a height of 2.4 meters or higher, you get a high plunge, dealing more damage, more poise damage, and having greater knockback. Otherwise, you deal a low plunge, though both do fairly substantial damage. At the moment, Shell is the only character who can consistently achieve a verticality of over 2.4 meters by simply jumping. Any other forms of increasing one's height, like Albedo, Venti, and Zhongli, take too long for the active character to reach that height. So for one to even be able to perform plunging attacks, there would have to be a universal way for everyone to basically acquire Shell's jump height, and that's where Xianyun's elemental burst comes into play. On an 18 second cooldown with a 16 second duration, so it has good uptime, Xianyun heals the entire party up front while dealing a small bit of damage to nearby enemies, making her burst virtually identical to Jean's in regards to the initial cast. Xianyun then goes on to apply a buff to the active character. While in this state, she continuously regenerates the entire party, which I believe makes her the first character in Genshin to have passive continuous regeneration for her entire party in her base kit, as Jean's healing is restricted to a set location, Baiju can only do that with C2, and Farina can only accomplish this with someone else. Speaking of which, a property like this means that Farina and Xianyun will get along rather nicely. Continuing with the latter's burst, the active character receives increased jump height in tandem with the aforementioned healing, satisfying the first and foremost requirement for plunging attacks. Furthermore, the next 8 plunging attacks will have Xianyun deal follow-up animal damage to the tune of just over 70% of her attack. This is where you can surmise the role she plays for the team. Xianyun is primarily a healer and plunging attack booster, making her automatically a great fit for Xiao of course, but what's interesting is that technically speaking, she can make anyone and everyone a plunging attacker. Xianyun's ability to grant increased height to the active character implies the entire cast is now capable of using plunging attacks through her, which is excellent. 
I was pleasantly surprised when Farina fundamentally changed other characters and gave them newfound attention and usage. Jean, Noel, Baiju, Anfield, Kokomi to some extent, and I was hoping this wouldn't be a one-off and that more of these playstyle enabling units would come out. Lo and behold, we have one, only Shen Yun goes above and beyond by transforming literally the entire roster in theory. Granted, not everyone can just turn into a pogo stick. Whether or not a character can make efficient use of Shen Yun comes down to a variety of factors, key of which being their plunging attack scaling. Diluc, for instance, has by far the highest at 442%, higher than Shao, believe it or not. Beyond that, it's also whether it agrees with their rotation. As a generalization, plunging attacks can be a replacement for normal attacks. So, any unit who would use normal attacks for extended periods of time in the first place, Hu Tao, Diluc, Racer, Shao, Noel, Risley even, but therein lies my current concern with Shen Yun. She kind of doesn't have that many characters that deliberately synergize with her. What I mean by that is that while technically she can work with any team as she affords the mechanic necessitated by it, it's one-sided. Shao is the only character right now who fully capitalizes on Shen Yun, with every other unit having coincidental synergy due to the nature of her kit being self-contained. Now, you could say the healing component is of great benefit for any team where you conceivably want to deploy Jean, since the two elemental bursts resemble each other as far as healing is concerned. Therefore, Shen Yun can be a side grade to Jean when paired in tandem with Farina. One advantage that Shen Yun has in this department is that she can apply Swirl more comfortably than Jean can if we compare skill to skill. Also, I forgot to mention that plunging attacks have no internal cooldown, which means you get more elemental application from the on-fielder for more reactions and damage. So while Jean has more raw healing in concept, Shen Yun has better offensive support in my opinion. However, she is first and foremost a plunging attack specialist. So if you're not making use of that aspect of her kit, then you're not tapping into the full strength of the character. Her two passive talents underscore this, with the first granting 4-10% bonus crit rate on plunging attacks exclusively based on if her skill strikes 1-4 to four enemies. 10% crit rate may not seem all that exciting, but bear in mind that plunging attacks have slow attack speed in exchange for increased power, so missing a crit on a plunging attack is more consequential. Anything that brings you closer to 100 crit is a welcome addition. Her second ascension passive increases the impact of plunging attacks by double her attack, capping out at 9000. It might be challenging to get Shen Yun's attack to 4500, as even Shun He with full attack artifacts can struggle breaking above 4. But bear in mind that with plunging attacks averaging 40 to 60k on a reasonably equipped shell, that is a measurable boost in damage, not to mention the follow up attack she provides with it. The bottom line is that Shen Yun is explicitly geared towards plunging attacks and cannot be evaluated solely on the basis of her healing. Not that it's insufficient, she can more than meet your team's recovery needs, but with so much of her power budget being allocated towards plunges, I have a hard time seeing how good she really is with our present cast of units. All best to say, with the obvious exception of Shao, there aren't that many units who can fully take advantage of Xian Yun. Her situation is very reminiscent of Topaz from Hong Kai Star Rail. At the time she was released, follow-up attacks were still an underdeveloped niche, and so it was hard to accurately gauge if she was good or bad as the only one she reliably worked well with was Jing Yuan. One unit alone can't determine the relative strength of a support. A few versions later though and we had Dr. Ratio, another character who makes very efficient use of her absurd 50% follow damage boost, solidifying Topaz as one of the best supports in the game for that specific niche. To reiterate, we have Shao, and with Shen Yun now in the picture, I can expect the new best team for him to be her, Farzan, and Farina, with Farina producing a far higher DPS enhancement than Bennett, especially when accounting for Shen Yun's own augments. Not only that, but having three animal units drastically reduces the energy requirements for Shao and Farzan. Needless to say, Shao mains are eating well right now, but we still need more plunging specialists to draw a definitive conclusion. That being said, there's a lot of promise with her as it is. Being a complete package character enables her to potentially synergize with any character before and after who can imbue their auto attacks. Even for those who don't have a kit specifically tailored to plunging attacks, Shen Yun and Farina provide enough strength to make them viable in this department. We can use that as a reference point. If she's able to make non-plunging units perform well with plunging attacks, then if and when new units come out who actually do specialize in them, provided they themselves are good, Shen Yun's value as a support will only appreciate over time. So I suppose my preliminary assessment of her is that her full potential isn't currently tapped into at the moment, but even in spite of that, she's serviceable enough to keep up with the competition. It's almost like Ito back in version 2. Ito and by extension Mano Geo was a worthwhile alternative that could hold its own against the prevailing meta at the time. Ayaka Freeze, Raiden National, what have you. Unlike Ito, however, Shen Yun is a support and is fully self-contained, giving her much, much better prospects with the future. So if you're looking to spice up your gameplay, you could do a lot worse than her. For those of you dead set on acquiring her, now comes the part where we go over her constellations. Easiest way to summarize her constellations would be this. If you're picking her for general usage with Farina because you don't have or for some reason don't like Jean's playstyle, then you have no reason to go for her constellations whatsoever because they're not conducive towards that part of her gameplay. However, if you're trying to build the most cracked shell team possible, then C1 and C2 are worth consideration. 
Her first constellation fittingly affords an additional cast of her skill, which might explain why Ganyu and Shunho's C1s are also extra casts. I guess they take after their guardian. I haven't gone over Shenyun's skill since by and large it's just a battery. Granted, it does a ton of damage on triple casts, but that just takes too long to pull off. Ultimately, it's like Bennett's skill, a quick charge of energy. Although it boasts some very impressive verticality, which can be useful for overworld travel. Beyond that, it's not nearly as game-changing as Shunho's C1, which allows her to access both the tap and hold buffs of her skill at the same time. The main advantage of Shenyun C1 is that it further lessens the need for energy on Firezan, Shao, and herself. The real reason you want to consider her C1 is naturally you need that before you get C2. In addition to increasing her attack by 20% for a long duration whenever casting her skill, the total plunging attack boost from a second ascension passive doubles, allowing for up to 18,000 bonus damage. So once again, assuming you're pumping out 40 to 60k, that goes up to roughly 60 to 80k per plunge. Shinya's constellations are fantastic, but right now the only team you would want them for is Shao. Not that they specifically benefit Shao, rather, I don't see a reason to invest in Shenyun this hard for other units. If you're getting her to fix up a new playstyle for, say, Diluc, then I don't think it's all that worth it. I would recommend going after her weapon instead. Her catalyst is phenomenal, a whopping 741 attack, the highest attack on a catalyst we've seen to date. At R1, it gives 28% bonus plunging attack damage to all party members for 20 seconds after the wielder lands a plunging attack of their own. With the duration of 20 seconds, you can assume it's always in effect. Also, every plunging attack regenerates 2.5 energy, which is insane. Energy recharge be damned. Shenyun with the signature weapon eliminates damn near all of her energy needs in shell teams. Her catalyst basically has a C1 and C2 built into it if you think about it. I mean, obviously having your cake and eating it too would be to have both a C2 and R1, but definitely prioritize the weapon first. This is Stara Lightcone levels of good. All in all though, I'm standing by my original sentiment that Shenyun is a decent unit whose full potential is currently not realized yet. While she's able to work with any on-fielder who can imbue elements onto their auto attacks, I don't think she's a very prominent character right now. Personally, I have the same opinion towards her that I did for Navia. Shen Yun is by no means a waste of primo gems. If you pull for her, you'll most certainly get a return on investment. But until we get new plunging attackers, her main pull value lies in opening up fun, unique playstyles without sacrificing viability. That in and of itself is a good thing though. Historically, Mihoyo's unorthodox characters traded too much practicality for their quirky gameplay like Xinyan, Dia, Sayu, and whatnot, so having units like Lini, Navia, and Shenyun encourage different angles of approach on Genshin's combat while still being strong has been quite productive. Even among the innovative version 4 units we've gotten so far, Shenyun stands out for just how many characters she can give a new playstyle to. In other words, she's a game-changing unit, not in a meta sense, but in a literal sense. She lets you play the game differently. TLDR, if you mean Shao, get her, if you play Genshi for fun, get her, if you're a waifu player, get her, or else. But if you're only going for the best characters, I would wait for a plunging attacker who's as broken as Nivellet and then go after her. I think I'm gonna get her, mostly so I have someone else besides Jean who I can use with Farina. Nothing against Jean, I just think Shenyun looks more enjoyable to play with. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on Shenyun, if you like the way she's designed or not, and if you plan to pull for her. That's gonna be it for today, so if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Varsfam, join my Discord server, and check out my other Genshin first impressions if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.